Meow! Hello there, fellow cat. I am also a cat, but I might also be an Egyptian pharaoh. The jury is out. Are you also an Egyptian pharaoh? Or is that just a me thing? You know, back in my day, you would be on your knees worshipping me, and I would be worshipping you, because cats were worshipped in ancient Egypt, as should be the case in today's age. Am I right? Yeah, you know I'm right. Hey everybody, this is Lady Cat. Uh, we're fostering her and two of her kittens at the moment. And uh, she's lovely. She's really sweet. She's a sweetheart. And obviously with her being a foster cat, we have to give her up soon. And she's getting a bit upset. You can tell she's shedding a little bit. She doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> but um, she's really delightful. She loves people. You're so sweet. You're the nicest bloody cat. And I don't know how we're going to give her up, but we're going to. And I just wanted some proof of the fact that she was with us for a brief time. Because she's so nice. She's the nicest cat. So I just wanted to introduce you guys to her and say hey. Obviously, she's a bit upset, so I'm gonna give it back to her kittens now. <laughs> hey! What's up, guys? Little Karibo here once again with another episode of Little Karibo Watches Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, which, funnily enough, is not a series where I review the quality of marketplace bananas, nor is it a series where I fit people for a pair of luxury pants so that they can wear them to a yacht wedding. No, this is a series where I, Little Karibo, watch Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. It's weird. I don't get it. As self-explanatory as it sounds, I watch an episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, the dub of it, and then I get on camera and I talk to you guys about my thoughts and reactions to it. And I frequently rely on repetition and catchphrases such as, Hey, look at that! Or, What you talking about, Jaden Yuki? Every episode I say those catchphrases. Keep an eye out in this one because you, you know they'll come up. And as always, you can follow along with me if you watch via legal means such as Hulu.com, Yu-Gi-Oh.com, uh, DVDs of the show. I believe it's on Amazon Prime. It might be on YouTube at this point, the official Yu-Gi-Oh YouTube. There's plenty of legal ways to follow along. So please, follow me legally. Not illegally, like certain people have, and I've needed security to follow me around to protect me. That's not a joke. That's the funny part. So without further ado, and hopefully without any stalkers as well, let's dive right in to Yu-Gi-Oh! GX episode 15, entitled Courting Alexis. So the episode starts off with a shot of Duel Academy, and we hear Fonda Fontaine, one of the teachers there, screaming. All right, class, get your game on! <laughs> I like that whenever get your game on is used in a context other than trading card games, you have to explain what you're referring to. It's basically like if I challenged you to a chess game, and then when we sat down to play chess, I said, it's time to get your game on. By the way, I am referring to the game of chess that we are currently playing. That's how weird that was. You're giving unnecessarily specific instructions, Fonda Fontaine. And then we see a bunch of Duel Academy students playing tennis. What? First we see him playing baseball, now we have to watch him play tennis. I didn't sign up for this. I was promised a TV show where the most prevalent form of sports and entertainment is trading cards. What is this actual physical activity nonsense? I mean, I guess some tennis skills would come in handy if you were a duelist. It would teach you how to whack at people with a tennis racket if they try and take your cards away from you. That's literally the only thing I can think of that that would actually help with. Also, tennis is one of the only sports where you could become a famous player while also sporting a ridiculous haircut. So that'll come in handy. Even Jaden Bloody Yuki has to ask what this has to do with dueling while playing the game of tennis. Come on, would someone tell me what in the world tennis has to do with dueling? Jaden Yuki there, completely unfazed by terrifying spectral visions of duel monsters that try to take his soul, very bothered by tennis. Also, Jaden had no trouble accepting the fact that they had to play baseball, but tennis? That is a no-go, apparently. Jaden's opponent explains how knowing how tennis works will help you play card games better. Everything, taking turns, thinking on your feet, and the harder you play, the better you do. Yeah, the thinking on your feet part is gonna be significantly less useful when they start playing card games on motorcycles. Just saying. Jaden hears all of this and launches himself into the f***ing sky and hits the tennis ball with the force of a thousand annoying suns. The ball goes flying at a massive velocity and almost hits Alexis in the face. But she's saved at the last minute by a guy who gets in the way of the ball and whacks it at Professor Crowler's face instead. Alexis and her friend thank the stranger for saving her. Thank you. Alexis, that ball almost creamed you. Are you okay? Creamed her? <laughs> ah! The cute boy that saved Alexis turns around and reveals that he has another one of these weird 
curtain mullet things that all cute boys need to have, apparently. A boy isn't attractive unless I can do a water slide down the back of his head. He's not cute unless I can project a 4K quality image of Stanley Kubrick's The Shining on the back of his hair. Those are the cute boy conditions. He's gotta have that long hair. Mm bop. The boy offers to carry Alexis to the nurse despite the fact that absolutely nothing happened to her. So I'm getting some alarm bells. Wouldn't be great if she said, okay, and then he like wrapped her up in his anime mullet and just dragged her behind him the whole way. And he gets one of those blue shiny background effects that insists that he's a very attractive young man. If you've ever met someone and you see a blue background like that behind them, it's not that they're attractive, you are having an aneurysm. So watch out for that. Alexis's friends get heart eyes, motherfucker. Alexis says no to the offer of taking her to the nurse, and then she gets one of them shiny backgrounds that insists she's a- Sorry about that. Brief aneurysm. The boy gets all blushy and is like, that's Alexis Rhodes. And because he's taken out by her cuteness, she offers to take him to the nurse. Wouldn't it be great if she just plopped him on her boobs and then walked off with him? <laughs> the word plop and boobs existing in the same sentence removes all sexiness from that. This guy says that he knows Alexis as he is also in obelisk blue. Well, he's clearly fashioned his own hairstyle after hers. You got a long way to go before yours is as unnecessarily long as Alexis's is. Alexis's is? Alexis's is. Alexis's is. Then this happens. Not that I've ever had the pleasure of talking to you, let alone to touch you. <laughs> oh, sh. Jaden and Cyrus watch this guy make a fool of himself in front of Alexis and look very unimpressed. Yeah, like you guys have been great with the girls. You guys are total smooth operators, what with the way one of you snuck into the girls' dorm. And then Jade and Yuki doesn't even know that the opposite gender even exists. Cause it's not a type of card. I'm just saying you have no right. And then we get the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX opening theme! And I know it plugged it last week, I'm gonna plug it again this week, and that's your lot. But X the Dark One, my best friend, he made a cover of the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX English theme. And it's fan-bloody-tastic. Please go watch it. Here's a little preview clip that I got permission to show in my video. Wow! I think you'll agree that was bloody impressive. Go check it out. In Crowler's office, Jaden is being admonished for what happened to Crowler. And Fonda Fontaine randomly sticks up for him, saying that Jaden wasn't the one who hit the ball at him. Okay, let's walk this back. Jaden was clearly in the wrong. He was recklessly hitting that ball in a direction that wasn't even the way it was supposed to go. And then this other guy jumps in and protects Alexis from getting a concussion and the ball happens to go towards Crowler. That is not his fault. That situation only arose because of what Jaden did. Fonda Fontaine? More like Fonda bullshit. Crowler says he saw the whole thing with his two eyes and then corrects himself and says, well, one eye. Were you injured before the event took place? Jaden acknowledges one of the shittest X-Men ever. <coughs> Cyclops. Jaden Yuki there, pulling insults from ancient Greek times. Also, why are you making fun of a guy for getting injured? What you talking about, Jaden Yuki? Uh. Jaden says, look, if you want to punish me, I'll quit tennis. I don't even like it. So Crowler decides that the best punishment is to make him play tennis. That's brilliant. You know, if Jaden was smart, he'd be like, you know what I hate even worse than tennis? playing card games. I still take task with all of this because there isn't a single lyric in the opening theme that talks about playing tennis. Chilling out with the crew in the schoolyard, finding trouble, never looking too hard. Well, back at class, they never taught us this, but some things you gotta learn while playing tennis. Oh, I guess it is in there. Ah, my bad. Alexis is getting changed, calm down. And her two friends show up and tell her that they found out who that hot tennis guy was. Imagine being known as hot tennis guy. I myself am perfectly happy with my moniker of chubby YouTube celebrity. Like, which do you think sounds more impressive? Hot tennis guy or chubby YouTube pseudo celebrity? Eh? 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 Yeah. Uh, uh. Also in the foreground of this shot are two obelisk blue girls that just sit there with their gobs open the entire time. I think it's supposed to look like they're having a conversation, but it looks like they've seen Bigfoot just walking by in the foreground that we just can't see. I didn't know he played tennis. Or that he was a girl. Weird. Apparently the boy is Harrington Rosewood. Let's take a moment because that might be the most four kids sounding name I've ever heard. I asked Jaden Yuki, Cyrus Truesdale, Harrington 
Rosewood. Harrington Rosewood sounds like a name you get when you're playing like a, an MMO and you click random name generator. Harrington Rosewood. Harrington. Apparently he's the heir to a sporting goods company and they have stores everywhere. How do they have stores everywhere if we live in a world where card games is the primary pastime? Nobody's playing sports in this world. I refuse to believe it. Have you seen Kaiba and Yugi's bodies as they get older? They're clearly getting very buff just from playing card games. I don't know why anybody would want to play any kind of physical activity if they could just get buff doing that. The girls encourage Alexis to go after him. An older guy who's rich and a hottie? That's not great, Alexis. That's boyfriend material, so go on and get him. Girls, I'm just not looking for a boyfriend right now. What f***ing Yu-Gi-Oh show am I f***ing watching? Do you remember that one episode of Yu-Gi-Oh Duel Monsters where Marek challenged the Pharaoh and he was like, I'm gonna get you for all the damage you did to my family. I'm gonna kill you, Pharaoh, and your friends are gonna watch. And Yami Yugi said, look, I'm just not interested in a nemesis right now, okay? Try again in a few years. How about that? Best I can do for you. The girls notice Cyrus is freaking out outside the changing room, so they go out and talk to him. What's with Super Spaz over there? What? You can't say that! Cyrus asks Alexis where the tennis team tends to meet up, and Alexis tells him to try the tennis court. So Cyrus goes off and checks that. Why didn't you check that first? Weren't you just there? Cyrus comes back and says it's the most unfair thing ever. Jaden is being forced to play tennis against the guy who really hit Crowler. All right, can we stop pretending that circumstances conspired against Jaden? He hit the ball hard enough to risk injuring somebody. He's not blameless. Yes, it turns out the tennis captain is Harrington Rosewood himself. Self. It's hard not to say that name with a posh accent. Hey up lads, it's Harrington Rosewood. Hot tennis guy extraordinaire. We have sporting goods all over the country. Please go to them, nobody's buying anything. On the tennis court, Harrington is taking it to Jaden, giving him no time to recover in between volleys. And when Jaden shows signs of being tired, Harrington lays into him verbally as well. You gotta hustle to build that muscle. You need to sweat to become a threat. If you don't pick up the pace, you won't win the race. Okay, Harrington. You can lay off of the sports cliches. I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah, stop using so many cliches, Harrington. That's real rich coming from f***ing boy over here. Get your game on and stop using so many cliches. It's very predictable. Now get your game on. Harrington explains that there's no I in team and that is the first rule in tennis. I think Harrington might be an insane person. Harrington says, I think a thousand strokes will help you make tennis more your racket. Oh, trust me, a thousand strokes is just a warm up for Jaden. <laughs> oh, oh, I tempted fate. Alexis shows up and is pissed. I, I guess. Why? And she walks right past Harrington Rosewood and goes straight to Jaden. And Alexis tells Jaden that she heard from Banner that somebody spotted Chaz. Well, I hope so. It's not like he went missing. He's he's on like a, a boat with a crew and everything. It's not like he's... He's not... Is he missing? I thought he like went home or something. What? Is he... Is he... What, what happened? I was on my way here and I ran into Professor Banner. He told me someone spotted Chaz. You know, in the UK, spotted Chaz is actually a very popular blancmange-themed dessert. Next time you're in England, ask them for some spotted Chaz. I made it up. You're gonna look a fool. Having seen the woman he has romantic feelings for interacting with a member of the opposite sex in a completely innocent way, Harrington has a perfectly reasonable reaction. You can't talk to a first-round pick like Alexis. I mean, you can't even return a buggy whip with some topspin, so stay away from my little obelisk pixie. What the f***? I get the feeling that whoever adapted the script for this episode had the Wikipedia page for tennis rules open in a separate browser the whole time. Cyrus hears Harrington refer to Alexis as his obelisk pixie and imagines a number of obelisk the tormentors flying around like butterflies. This is the highlight of the f episode. I'm not even gonna make jokes about it. It's amazing. I just wish he could have included a winged bumblebee of Ra in there. Or Slifer the Sky Dragonfly. Harrington threatens Jaden. Just step away from the beautiful girl. You're way out of your league. Do not make me go athletic on you. What is he gonna do? Run a hundred yard dash at him? 
Jaden tries to cool down the situation. Whoa, bro, cool off. Okay, I don't know about Harrington Rosewood, but if I heard someone say to me, whoa, bro, cool down, it would only make me more hot. Just the combination of whoa and bro is enough to make me be like, ah, oh, you're getting a slap. Jaden calls Alexis Lex, and Harrington explodes on him and demands to know what that pet name means. And when Jaden explains that it's short for Alexis, Harrington has the calm and mature response that you would expect from a social media interaction related to politics. Sure, you'd like me to believe that, wouldn't you? Well, I don't. I don't believe anything you say. Harrington challenges Jaden? No way, bro. Know your sports. When a huddle is over, you make your play. You don't run away. What is happening? Harrington challenges Jaden to a children's card game, and whoever wins becomes Alexis's fiance. Which you'd think would be really weird, but it is actually the traditional method by which you propose to people in the Yu-Gi-Oh world. It's always super awkward because there has to be two people challenging for this girl's hand in marriage. So there's always going to be somebody who doesn't get to marry her. Also, the woman is forced to marry somebody. That's a problem too. That's actually why Yugi's dad is never around. He lost a card game and was sent to the Shadow Realm while proposing to Yugi's mom. There were some really awkward Facebook pictures of the event posted online afterwards. A lot of tears. Cyrus says if this guy is as obsessed with card games as he is tennis, Jaden's in big trouble. Well, he's not been spouting random card game tropes in his dialogue, so I imagine he's not quite as obsessed as he is with tennis. Jaden Yuki and Harrington Rosewood both get their dual discs at the ready. And Alexis's friend is very charmed by all of this. Two cutie pie boys dueling it out for your hand in marriage. Wait, is Jaden meant to be a cutie pie? He don't even have massive long mullet hair, which he uses to wrap girls up in and take them to the nurse's office for no reason. How could he be cute? How he cute? How he cute? I never saw Jaden get a shiny blue anime background. He not cute. He not cute. Alexis says she's not getting married or engaged. She's just here to see if the rumors about Harrington being as good as her brother Zane are true. You know, if a guy like Harrington Rosewood went to my school and was constantly spouting tennis memes and hitting on women, I don't think the predominant rumor about him would be that he's good at card games. Harrington goes first and of course his cards are all in tennis themed. And he plays the spell card Service Ace and says that this power serve is gonna make Jaden sweat. I don't know if it's been clear from the review of this episode, but he talks about sweating a lot. Like I get it, sports, athleticism, sweating, but it's a very specific thing to highlight. Hey Jaden, let's play a card game. I'm going to make you sweat. Hey, I'm working up a sweat here, but don't sweat it. Sweat, 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 sweat. This spell allows Harrington to pick a card, and if Jaden can't guess what it is, then Jaden loses 1,500 life points. Wow, this really is making Jaden sweat. Yeah, and hum too. What, what was that? What, was that a joke? Is that gonna be a joke? Who? No! Hey guys, got a great idea for a joke for the new episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX! Alright, hit us with it. Well, what if Cyrus says that Jaden's really working up a sweat, and then one of the other characters says, Yeah, and he's humming too, and then it cuts to Jaden, and he's humming. Oh, you mean because of literal humming? Yeah, that... that's a bit sh Ah, don't worry, I'm sure that I can think of something better than that by the time the episode's done. Lo and behold... The sh** stayed in. Harrington says that this duel is probably the best workout that Jaden's had all week. You guys were just playing tennis together. And then earlier than that, you were also playing tennis. Playing tennis multiple times is what led us to this situation. You don't think that would be working up more of a sweat than playing King card games! Jaden guesses that it's a spell card and Harrington goes, Oh, are you sure? You have chance to change your mind, you know. But Jaden, being the elite, unbeatable duelist that he is, doesn't fall for that. And no, he falls for it. Sorry, he falls for it and he loses 1500 life points because he's the best duelist ever. Harrington says, Looks like we found another thing you're bad at, huh? What was the first thing? Being likable. Harrington sets up to attack Jaden. Now we'll put this card away and let loose the big stroke. Ah! Ow! Stop it! Jaden summons elemental hero Avion and attacks with Quill Cascade. So he just lobs Star-Lord at them. Huh? Uh, Peter Quill. Harrington then activates 
Yet another tennis-themed trap card, Receive Ace, which negates Jaden's attack and also deals 1500 damage to his life points. These cards are so fucking specific. It's kind of ridiculous. I'm a guy who unironically enjoys pro wrestling, but I'm looking at this and I'm like, I can't buy it. Jaden Yuki Thurp Derp's a Firth Derp. Harrington then plays Smash Ace, which no, is not a hint that Phoenix Wright is gonna be in the next Smash game. Sorry guys. This spell card lets him flip the top card on his deck and if it's a monster card, then Jaden loses more life points. Meanwhile, Jaden Yuki is very bored by every fanfic description on fanfiction.net involving his character. Let me guess. I get nailed, right? Harrington lucks out, and it is indeed a monster card. Lady Luck, she hates me. Get f***ed, you jammy git. You are the epitome of having the most absurd luck in the entire franchise, and you're complaining about Lady Luck not liking you. You're a f***ing muppet. You're the one always pulling out these ludicrous card combos with Elemental Hero whatever, he does my tits in. Harrington's expert tennis Yu-Gi-Oh combo play is thwarted by Jaden. It's a trap, feather wind, ever hear of it? Or maybe I should say, have you ever caught wind of it? Yeah, maybe if you're from the 1930s. Avion deflects Smash Ace's attack and it explodes all over Cyrus and Alexis and her chums, but it has no actual physical effect on them. Hang on, once again, I have to bring up the fluctuating logistics behind these bloody hologram things. Because back in that episode when Alexis dueled Jaden on that lake, Crowler was electrocuted by some of the electricity from the hologram's attacks. But these guys get hit full on by an explosion and nothing happens. They're mildly bothered by it. I just want consistency. Is that too much to ask from the Yu-Gi-Oh show where cards are magic and also dragons? Harrington lets that last turn roll off him like water off a duck's back. If the duck had upsettingly long hair. Sometimes you gotta take hits to give them. <laughs> Great, he's back on his cliche kick. Wait, was that last bit a cliche? Cause I've never fucking heard it. Also, you have no right, Jaden. No right. Jaden Yuki offers up a cliche of his own. Well, here's mine. He who laughs last, laughs loudest. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? Stop it! Harrington finally gets Jaden to stop laughing by suggesting he might lose the duel. Jaden says that Harrington might have the home court advantage while playing tennis, but when he's in a duel, Jaden is always at home. Is this gonna end like planes, trains, and automobiles, and we're gonna learn that Jaden was homeless the entire time? Because that might explain his manners. For the second time in two episodes, Jaden uses polymerization to fuse Clayman with Bustina and he brings out Rampant Blaster. Sorry, Rampart Blaster. Rampant Blaster was the name we gave for one of the kids in our school who had diarrhea. Jaden attacks Harrington with both Avion and Rampart Blaster. And in response, Harrington activates the card Deuce, which can only be activated when both players have a thousand life points. I'm starting to have an inkling that this duel might be scripted. Harrington starts combing his hair, which surprisingly doesn't take a whopping two hours. Harrington explains that the effect of this card makes it so that they can each only attack with one monster per turn. And life points no longer matter, it's now about whoever hits their opponent twice in a row. You know, like it's a tennis game. And Harrington makes the gambit of summoning the big server, which is basically just a robot tennis player. Okay, so that's how the Rosewood sporting goods industry is able to stay alive. The only people playing sports in this world are the robots. You think robots overthrew humanity a long time ago, but chose to coexist with them, and humanity gets to play the card games, while the robots get to play the actual sports. Seems like a fair compromise to me. Blade Runner 3 really should be about a replicant tennis tournament, shouldn't it? I took way too many drugs before doing this one. Big Server hits a fucking spiked ball at Jaden. Really seems like Jaden missed a perfect opportunity to say, you cannot be serious. Oh, and they even have the little light up circles that they have in tennis games to show who has the advantage. Who is that for? Harrington plays Service Ace a second time and tells Jaden that if he guesses wrong, then he's out of the game. And the show manages to carry the tension for a full second before Jaden guesses right and is perfectly fine. Harrington plays Giant Racket and equips it to Big Server. I love that there's a card called Giant Racket and it is just a giant racket. That is amazing. I want that card, 
Please, someone give me that card. Giant Racket! Giant Racket makes it so that the first attack that Jaden pulls on Big Server will have its damage reduced to zero, which effectively makes Jaden incapable of defeating Harrington, since the effect of Deuce makes it so that they can only attack with one monster each time. I just realized that I completely missed the opportunity to say that Harrington dropped a Deuce on the duel field. And now he's pointing at his Deuce and he's saying, look at that. Look what it does. But then Jaden activates Defuse and uses the effect of his spell card Feather Shot and makes it so that Avion is able to attack once per monster on the field. And given that there's multiple monsters on the field, I'll let you deduce who wins the duel. It's Jaden. Jaden did it. Harrington runs to the nearest Rosewood Sporting Goods store so that he can comfort himself in its bosom. And Jaden watches him leave in confusion at the notion that a human being could have romantic attachment to anything that wasn't a trading card. And then the shippers get real excited as Jaden walks up to Alexis and says, I guess I'm your fiancé now. And then Jaden takes a page right out of Goku's book and says, what is a fiancé anyway? What you talking about, Jaden Yuki? Alexis bold-facedly lies to Jaden and and says that it means friend, which officially makes this the closest to a Yu-Gi-Oh harem show as Jaden now believes he is surrounded by his fiancés at all times. And that's the end of the episode! What did you think of this episode? Because I bloody loved it. I actually had a blast with this one. They really, they not only did they embrace the ridiculousness of the tennis-themed Yu-Gi-Oh cards to such an extreme that it was actually pretty enjoyable. But they also told a kind of really silly story effectively. I think they effectively worked it into the, the premise of the show. And considering I've always been kind of averse to give Yu-Gi-Oh! GX the time of day, because I think it's kind of a little too silly at times, I liked the silliness here, which is... Not something I expected. I, I kind of dug how how daft it got. There were some times while watching this one that I feel they must have been making some sort of cultural reference that just didn't play in the in the English script, so they had to change it to something completely different. Like the part where they're talking about Jaden humming. That kind of reeked of like having to change the joke that was originally there. Cause it wasn't funny. I don't know what was going on with that. Also, Harrington Rosewood. That name has to go to the top of the Hall of Fame of four kids' character names. Harrington. I like it. Also, Giant Racket. That was a turn up for the books. I need that card more than life itself now. Before I sign off, I want to once again give a whopping great Giant Racket sized shout out to all of our Patreon pledges. You guys are the bomb diggity. If I could play a tennis game with anybody, it would be Harrington Rosewood, but I would like you guys to be there watching it. Thank you. Thank you to each and every single one of you. You guys make us able to do this. You guys are our... You guys are... What is the tennis equivalent of, like, emotional support? You guys are the tennis fans <laughs> of, of Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged, of Little Karibo. I don't know. I lost my train of thought, but thank you. Until next time, this is Little Karibo saying service! <laughs>